Hey there and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Natasha and I'm so happy that you stopped by. I share content here on YouTube and over on Instagram all about memory keeping and creative planning in hopes to inspire you to take time for yourself today to create and to recharge. I definitely believe that two of these things are some of the most important things we can do for our mental health and mental well-being. And I really hope that you're able to walk away with some great ideas and inspiration today. So now we have introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. I am so excited for today's video as we are kicking off the brand new memory planning series called Sit Down and Start. This memory planning series is all about literally how you can sit down at your craft table or your kitchen table and actually get started. I understand that there's so many of us out there who are wanting to know how to start memory planning but are getting kind of stuck with actually how to start. So this series is gonna walk you through four different ways that you can approach memory planning. This has been something that I've implemented even as somebody who has been memory planning for years and it's something I've incorporated into my memory planning routine if you want to say and giving myself that flexibility to mix it up and that permission that depending on how I'm feeling I can approach that weekly layout the way that I feel is going to fit best for me. So I hope that this series is going to give you some ideas if you're starting brand new with memory planning or you're a seasoned memory planner that you're able to walk away with some different ideas to be able to implement into your craft. Be sure if you haven't subscribed to subscribe down below so you can stay tuned with the videos that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. If you are following this live, you will be notified. If you are catching the replay, I'll be sure to add some cards to add on to the uh, playlist of where you can find the other videos in this series. Okay, so my question for you now is, how many of you get stuck when it comes to the photo portion of memory planning? Either you don't know how to format the photos or how to print the photos, you don't have a printer at home. There's a lot of hangups around actually printing the photos. But what if I just told you right now that who said you even need photos to memory plan? We have created such a really cute layout that doesn't involve any type of photos. The first approach I'm going to share with you today is actually not using photos at all. This is something that I, even as somebody who has access to a photo printer and even a regular inkjet printer here, there's sometimes for whatever reason I'm out of ink or I and lazy and don't feel like doing it, I say, you know what? I don't have to include photos this week. This week is gonna be a photoless layout. And I create the spread and I love it and then I move on. Now I could continue to not do photos. Sometimes I add photos, but this is just a way to approach it. It doesn't mean this has to be the way that you approach it every single week, but it's definitely a way that you can approach memory planning if you're wanting to get started, right? You're sitting down and this is a roadblock. Remember, hey, I don't even need photos to start. So let's jump in and taking a look at the supplies that we will be using for this I'm layout. Starting off with my daisy planner pages this is from coco daisy it has both a horizontal and a vertical format in one planner so it is six months um, at a time it's undated and i really enjoy being able to switch in and out the different style layouts that i want so for this week i'm going to go with the horizontal layout i do get mine unpunched or without holes so i can do that myself now, because this memory planning layout is all about when we are going to be using no photos, I really love using products to help support tell the stories and capture the moments of that week. Now, stickers and stamps, I've got them over here, a stack to share with you, are, I think are the best two types of products to work with. So this has a ton of like best blank. And so I think this is really helpful to uh, document and keep memory keep uh, 
with a little assistance. Um, now, of course, there are journal cards. I don't have any in particular right in front of me, but um, journal cards that do have different prompts and like sentence frames or sentence starters that can also be used and work really well with this type of memory planning process. So these are from the paper person shop along with this um, cut apart sheet. Now, as you can see, this was for December, January. I am just eyeballing these two cards. I pulled um, this floral pattern that I'm gonna pull my colors from. So I thought that maybe this would be a pretty complimentary color. So this is from the paper person. This also came in a paper person um, kit as well. I believe this is, yep, from Amy Tangerine. I really love um, these colors, so I've pulled that as well. So this is um, all from the paper person shop. And then I've got a lot of Heidi Swap goodies. So I do subscribe to the Stamp Society subscription. So that's with Stop the Blur. Um, and this is her monthly stamp subscription. And I have to say, I really feel like the Stamp Society stamps are so well thought out and really well designed. The quality of the polymer stamp is just super impressive. If you are new to stamping, for this type of stamp, you do need a clear stamping block. You just go ahead and you peel it off of the packaging here and you go ahead and put it onto your stamping block and you're able to stamp away. So fantastic quality and then just really, really thoughtful. And I think these work so well in memory planning as uh, Heidi does use these in her memory planning uh, projects. And I just really love, so like big accomplishment, makes me happy, so annoyed by. These are all, don't forget to, here we go. So these are all fantastic ways to help document your week and your memory. Now that we have our stamps and stickers ready to go, I have already gone ahead and started generating a list of different things that correspond with the different stickers that I'm going to be using in this layout. This way I have my list and my products ready to go. Um, this just makes it flow a bit easier. Of course, if you are doing this without filming yourself, maybe you're using this to help guide you and just kind of be that mental trigger but if I did that I'd be looking at my phone and my planner trying to like piece things together and that would probably be quite a long video and probably not that entertaining for you so I definitely recommend having a list ready to go first off I am going to be trimming down my pattern papers to a more manageable size of what I would like to work with I am going to be building out some grids just to put some blocks of color down on the page. Often when I'm doing this type of layout with no photos, I know that the pattern papers are going to help ground the layout and add that foundation. So they're the first things that I'm adding to the paper and you will see I'm about to adhere them in creating a generalized structure for my layout. Now this is complete, I'm going to be moving on to stamping. I added some floral stamps from a old school Heidi Swap stamp set. I felt like that really played off nicely with the other florals that I had going on in the pattern paper. I'm using some of my favorite Distressed Oxide inks to add these little details to the spread. Now when using only stamps and stickers, I definitely encourage you to get creative in using colors of your highlighters, your mod liners. If you have quite a ink uh, stash, using different colors of inks. I think that really makes this type of layout super fun and playful. With some of my preliminary stamping completed, like some deco elements and the month, I am moving on to adding 
the prompt stickers and some box stickers that you will see. And as I mentioned in the beginning, these stickers are from the Paper Person shop. I'll be sure to add a link down below uh, to the different products that I'm using today. You'll see that I am using the stickers for some of the prompts and then I'm using this circular stamp set from Heidi Swap's Stamp Society. Here I'm creating a bit of a mask so that way it looks like it's just peeking out there. And I'm gonna be using these different circular spots as journaling areas just to ground my journaling. And of course, who doesn't like those cute little details, right? I adore this stamp set so much. I just, I really love circles and I'm so glad that they're making like a comeback and it gives me a great excuse to use my punches and to mix and match all these different cute details. So I'm pairing up my stickers with those newly stamped details. Even with the limited stamp set collection, I encourage you to create little circles and boxes with highlighters that you have to create that visual interest. Now I'm just adding the final touches and I'll be sure to add some photos of the finished product for you all. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. And especially if you're excited to see the remaining videos in the series, drop me a comment down below. That is always so super encouraging for me. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I hope you're able to walk away with some ideas on how you can create your next memory planning layout using no photos. It is totally possible. Remember, this is just one approach. It doesn't mean the way that you have to approach it every single week. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.